Honourable Chris Tremaine. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Speaker, Mr, Mr Cosgrove has painted a, a very unparliamentary picture, perhaps a metaphor of the select committee wandering through a zoo following an elephant and, and, and with a shovel. Yes, uh, those were your words, Mr Cosgrove. Fortunately, or uh, well, possibly fortunately, in the regard to this bill, I wasn't a member of the Commerce uh, Select Committee at that point in time. Uh, and so I come to it with fresh eyes. I come to it with fresh eyes and a different perspective to Mr Cosgrove. Because I read the title of the bill, Electronic Transactions Contract Formation Amendment Bill. And I think about the modern economy that we are currently in. A wonderful economy, an exciting time to be a Kiwi, Mr Speaker, to be a New Zealander in the New Zealand economy. It's an exciting for a, a range of reasons. And I, I start by the very, just attending the Business New Zealand Back to the Grindstone function just last night down at the, at the, at the Cake Tin, where they painted, where the, where the speakers one after another stood up and said that there were very good omens for business in New Zealand. They, they talked about uh, the, the positive vibe that was in the business community and the way that the government was creating the right conditions to invest for New Zealand. That was, that was just a, it's a great vibe. And I think that's why it's so exciting to be part of the New Zealand economy at the moment, to be part of this house that's actually driving that, that, that economy forward. And the reason why I say that in relation to this bill, electronic um, transactions, is actually more and more transactions, Mr Speaker, are occurring online. In fact, I don't know the, the figures, but uh, millions and millions of transactions are being con conducted every year online. And that requires us to be pretty clear about when the offer and acceptance on those transactions is, t takes place accurately. So I commend I commend Mr Goldsmith for bringing this bill to the House. I commend him for uh, bringing the bill, this members bill, not too many members have the opportunity to get to this point in time to successfully bring a members bill into the House and to have it pass, as I'm sure he will, over the next few weeks in this House. But Mr Speaker, let's be clear about what this bill does. It clarifies the legal position on the time at which a contract is formed if the acceptance of the offer is sent by electronic communication. Mr Speaker, it, it does take uh, the debate forward and it actually adds to the initiatives that this government has rolled out to drive a better economy. Because actually talking to those guys at the Back to the Grindstone uh, meeting last night, there has not been one silver bullet that's actually taken the economy forward. It's actually been a huge volume of different policies uh, that we have driven as a government. And just to remind you, Mr Speaker, there's been four key goals of the government here. Firstly, getting the uh, country back to surplus. We're going to do that in 2014 and 15. Right. Secondly, rebuilding that beautiful city of Christchurch. There's 50,000 uh, 50, repairs that have taken place down there already. Well, I tell you... Mr Hipkins, it has a lot more to do with this bill <laughs> than what Mr Cosgrove was talking about when he spoke on and on about Mr Banks. So I will continue. The third goal is actually about building better public services. And in that regard, we've outlined 10 key result areas. Result 10, which is actually about driving more online transactions, has a lot to do with this bill. And I want to talk about that in some depth. Uh, I'll come back to that, uh, better public services result area 10. Because electronic transactions, the point at which offer and acceptance is agreed, defined clearly by this bill, is going to play a big part in uh, modern transactions going forward. The fourth area of where we've um, tried to drive big change is through a more competitive and pr uh, productive economy. And that's been driven by the business growth agenda of which there have been six key components of that, many of which require uh, in changes in ICT. Can I elaborate more on that? Oh, I certainly can. One of the big initiatives there is ultra-fast broadband, which, what will that do? Drive more electronic transactions. It's a modern economy, and this bill uh, helps us 
to be clear about when offer and acceptance is achieved in those electronic transactions. Just to be clear about what we've achieved in the ultra-fast broadband, because it is exciting, Mr Speaker, to see what the government has rolled out in that regard. Uh, in terms of broadband, this, we've spent $1.65 billion, or spending that sort of level, uh, on uh, making sure that that electronic highway to conduct these transactions oh, is good. The aim is to have that uh, delivered by 2025. So um, we've rolled it out to 40,630 uh, new end users uh, just in the last quarter, to 31st of December. Now there's 363,000 end users around the country with ultra-fast broadband. We're 27% complete, Mr Speaker. Another huge initiative. There's more than 2,000 schools that are now online, uh, that they are able to connect to fibre, and we've even got 39 of the most remote uh, connected schools, allowing those communities to be connected through hubs. And guess what? They also depend on electronic transactions uh, as well. They probably even do uh, out in, uh, uh, yeah, out in the, the beautiful suburb that uh, you live out there in Wellington, Chris. So, um, and they will be actually uh, be concerned about electronic transactions as well. But coming back to the, the third point, which I wanted to um, spend some time on, uh, around those key objectives, which is building better public services, of which this bill uh, certainly adds to um, significantly. So in terms of better public services, we had um, 10 result areas which the uh, Prime Minister rolled out. Result area 10 was about bringing more transactions online in the digital environment, so that by 2017, 70% of transactions uh, that the government interacts with uh, New Zealanders are online. And in that regard, we've, we've brought out a basket of those transactions, many of which are electronic transactions, which require an offer and acceptance um, component to them. So let's, let's, let's go through a few of those transactions which are in the basket of 10. Uh, so just starting here, applying for a financial assistance with the Ministry of Social Development, 51% of those transactions are now being delivered online. Uh, paying individual tax, 75.1% of those transactions now being delivered online. Filing an individual tax return, 77.9%. Uh, the New Zealand Transport Agency, paying for a vehicle licence, actually requires an offer and an acceptance. This bill goes to the heart of being clear about when that transaction is completed. So I think it's really important. 24.8% uh, of those transactions being delivered online now. The New Zealand Police paying for a fine on time. I, I accept in that regard, probably not a transaction where there's an offer and acceptance. One has actually been forced to pay that one. But 42.2% uh, of those online. Passports, well, that was one that I was fortunate to have a, a fair bit to do with myself. But through the Department of Internal Affairs, rolling out online passports online, uh, we will now have 31.4% of passports being delivered online. 20% less than they used to be, and with a turnaround time of, of three days. Absolutely sensational. We've also got New Zealand Customs there using uh, the digital transactions, the 45.6% using SmartGate. So far from the uh, metaphor that Mr Cosgrove wanted to paint at the start of uh, this debate, Mr Speaker, that the Commerce Commission was following around some elephant with a series of spades, I see a totally different view of this particular piece of legislation. I see it as part of a tranche, tranche of new initiatives that this government has rolled, rolled out. We've made it clear that we agree that there is no silver bullet to taking this, this economy forward, that it's going to take uh, constant and never-ending improvement, constantly lifting the bar, even small bits of legislation like this that inch, inch the economy forward. And guess what? We're actually seeing results, Mr Speaker. Some of the best economic growth has been projected in the Western world. This economy will be back in surplus 2014-15. We are in fantastic shape. Mr Speaker, it is an exciting time to be a New Zealander and an exciting time to be part of this government. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Claire Curran.